Hello, welcome you all to our family of BioGoogle. In this video, we will discuss about the nucleic acids. Means how the nucleic acids are discovered and what are the nucleic acids and what the nucleic acids are made of, etc. Right? So, before going to the chemical details or the structure of nucleic acids, we will briefly get an idea about how the nucleic acids have been discovered. Okay. So, firstly, the scientist Frederick Mischer, Frederick Mischer, he has analyzed the cells, the nuclei of the human pus cells, observed the human pus cells and the fish sperm observed a fish sperm and in that he found he found a substance substance and that substance he named as nucleine that substance he named as nucleine okay remember the word nucleine for which he coined the term for the substance present in this human pus cells and a fish spur. Later on, another scientist, Oscar Hertwig, Oscar Hertwig, who said that nuclein is responsible for inheritance of the characteristics. Okay, he said he observed some substance that he named as nuclein, and Oscar Hertwig said that this substance is responsible for the transmission of the characteristics heredity or inheritance later on another scientist richard altman he is a student of mischer he is a student of frederick mischer he observed that he observed that Nucleine is acidic. He observed that nucleine is acidic in nature. Acidic in nature. Okay, because of that acidic nature, he renamed he renamed nucleine as nucleic acids. Nucleic acids. Renamed nuclei as the nucleic acids and he has given two types of nucleic acids such as such as dna and rna dna and rna okay and uh, at the same time uh, dna was found to be the genetic material in all the organisms so later on uh, another scientist another scientist p a levin p a Levin, he studied the structure and chemical nature of the nucleic acids and uh, he has given that the DNA, DNA is made of, DNA is made of three major components, DNA is made of three major components such as, first component is uh, the pentose sugar pentose sugar second component according to him is the nitrogenous basis nitrogenous basis and third component is phosphate group phosphate group okay these were the three components according to him as he observed that the DNA is made up of these three components okay so this is how and not only these four people many more people have contributed towards the study of nucleic acids and uh, discovery of uh, nucleic acids okay in today's class we will discuss in detail about these three components okay so without wasting time let us move on to the concept that is the components of the nucleic acids okay better i'll tell you uh, pause the video and uh, take them into your notebook rather than waiting for the 
nodes right so we'll see the components of this nucleic acids one by one in a detail okay so in the last class we have seen that nucleic acids are uh, present in nucleus nucleus of the cell and they contain one of the acidic components contain one of the acidic components so they are named as a nucleic acids so first component first component of nucleic acids as a pentose sugar pentose sugar okay so when we say the word sugar means carbohydrate we have uh, many types of carbohydrates okay like uh, monosaccharides then disaccharides trisaccharides tetrasaccharides penta etc then polysaccharides okay so here in monosaccharides in monosaccharides depending on the carbon number there are many types of uh, monosaccharides such as triose that is monosaccharides containing uh, three carbons then uh, tetrose monosaccharides containing uh, four carbons pentose that is monosaccharides containing uh, five carbons then hexose monosaccharides containing uh, six carbons like we have a glucose so here we have a pentose sugar that is pentose sugar is nothing but a monosaccharide containing a uh, five carbons monosaccharide containing a uh, five carbons okay so hope you have got idea what is pentose sugar it is a monosaccharide containing a uh, five carbons okay we'll just draw a brief diagram of the pentose sugar so we'll understand what is that okay so nothing but monosaccharide containing a uh, five carbons so it is named as a uh, pentose okay so pentose sugar a uh, sugar with a monosaccharide with five carbons okay monosaccharide with five carbons okay so when we has a five carbons let's see how the five carbons are arranged diagrammatically so there will be one uh, oxygen atom and uh, the structure which has five angles a pentangular structure or a pentagonal structure so this represents first carbon second carbon third carbon fourth carbon there is a next one so so like this the carbons are arranged this is the structure of pentose so oh h h h h h oh h h h2 c oh h so here first carbon second carbon third carbon fourth carbon this is the fifth carbon this is the fifth carbon okay so this is a pentose sugar having five carbons four carbons are there in the pentangular ring pentose ring and the fifth carbon is present in the long arm remember this arm fifth carbon is present in the form of a, a long arm right here this pentose sugar is different in dna different in rna okay that difference is just based on this second carbon okay so here in this position in second carbon if it is h if it is a h it is dna or deoxyribose deoxyribose in case of dna but in the place of h if it is oh if it is oh it is called ribose it is called ribose in case of rna in case of 
RNA. Okay, just simple difference. In this place, if H is there, it is deoxyribose in case of DNA. In this place, instead of H, if it is OH, it is ribose RNA. Usually, OH will be there in carbohydrate pentose it is ribose only but here in dna it is deoxyribose oxy d means oxygen is removed from the ribose okay here the oxygen is removed from the ribose so it has become deoxygenated ribose it is a deoxygenated ribose so it is a deoxyribose in case of a dna Okay, so remember this deoxyribose in case of uh, DNA and the pentose sugar is ribose in case of uh, RNA. One of the main point in a NEET examination. This may carry one of the questions in your NEET examination. Right? And one more thing you should remember this sugar is present in a uh, furanose form. Furanose form. Furanosporm, there is another word called pyranosporm. Means, contrary to this, there is another word called pyranose. Furanose means just uh, pentangular or pentagonal ring structure having a 5 carbons 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Pyranose means a hexagonal. Pyranose means a hexagonal ring or benzene ring and the sixth carbon here so first carbon second carbon third carbon fourth carbon fifth carbon sixth carbon sorry it will be here it is the location of a sixth carbon so but our pentose sugar in dna it is a in a furanous form but in other compounds contrary to this it is a pyranous form remember the difference here Okay, this is not necessary for our lecture, our topic, but you should be knowing what is furanose, a pentangular ring, what is pyranose, a hexangular, hexagonal ring. Right, then our pentose sugar is in a beta form, it is in a beta form, opposite to that it is alpha form, opposite to it, it is alpha form, here beta form means in the first carbon, the OH group is written on the, means towards the oxygen, towards the oxygen. So, here uh, we can say it is OH at the top, H at the bottom. But in alpha form what happens? It is the OH written at the bottom, H at the top. Okay. Get the difference between? beta form in pentose sugar alpha form in other sugars in other sugars but they are not present in dna okay so this is how our sugar is there and one more thing you should remember it is uh, d beta glucose you should be knowing what is d form what is l form d for a dextrorotatory in chemistry l for a levorotatory Okay, you may be knowing from chemistry background so when the light is passed through the compound in any instrument spectrometer like that a polarimeter so the light passes bends towards the right side the light bends towards the right side so it is called a dextrorotatory compound when the light bends towards the left side it is called a levo rotatory compound so our dna our pentose sugar is a, a, a dextro rotatory compound dextro rotatory compound means when the light is passed through this compound the light bends towards the right side in a clockwise manner so it is a dextro rotatory so don't need to remember about all these but you should be knowing about these things okay you should be knowing this but i am just giving this for your extra information because uh, furanose and paranose beta form and alpha form okay this is how our pentose sugar is there right so 
this is enough for the pento sugar we'll discuss all those details while discussing the bond formation in a further right the second component the second component is nitrogen base second component is a nitrogen base so we'll uh, write those nitrogen bases briefly and we'll try to make differences between those two types second component is nitrogen base nitrogen base or it is also called a nitrogenous bases nitrogen base or nitrogenous bases okay here these are nothing but the nitrogen containing containing heterocyclic compounds nitrogen containing heterocyclic compounds what is this heterocyclic cyclic when it uh, comes to the term cyclic there must be a benzene ring when we say the word cyclic it refers to the benzene ring okay but here the nitrogen nitrogenous bases in dna or rna they have nitrogens in the place of carbon what happens is usually uh, the benzene ring contains carbons benzene ring contains carbons uh, similarly when we draw this uh, complete structure of nitrogen base so it shows like this okay so in all the places there are carbons but in nitrogen bases in our nucleic acids in our nucleic acids some of the carbons are replaced by nitrogen atom okay that's a difference generally in chemistry the heterocyclic compounds or the benzene or the ring compounds contain carbons in all those places okay here the carbon means i will turn like this c it means it is having c h and o h like that but in nitrogen bases of the dna or rna some of the carbons are replaced by some of the carbons are replaced by the nitrogen atoms replaced by the nitrogen atoms okay so let us name is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so first carbon replaced by nitrogen third carbon replaced by nitrogen six seventh carbon replaced by nitrogen and ninth carbon replaced by nitrogen like that in the compound containing all carbons some of the nitrogens will be replaced by sorry some of the carbons will be replaced by nitrogen hence they are known as nitrogen containing heterocyclic compounds or the derivatives of the benzene compounds or benzene relatives right this is the actual meaning here based on the number of rings based on the number of rings the nitrogen bases or nitrogenous bases are of two types based on the number of rings some may contain a single ring some may contain two rings some may contain two rings based on that there are two types of nitrogenous bases let us try to make a brief difference over between them so that we can understand easily in a better way okay let's make a brief or a small table of that so the two categories are first category is purines second category is pyrimidines first category is a purine second category is a pyrimidine okay so what are the difference uh, you should know you, uh, you know that nitrogen bases are of two types purines as well as pyrimidines let us list out what are the differences among purines as well as 
uh, pyrimidines. First point. These are uh, dicyclic or bicyclic compounds. Bicyclic compounds. And here they are monocyclic compounds. These are monocyclic compounds. Means purines contain two rings. One is hexagonal, one is a pentagonal. Hexagonal and pentagonal, two rings are. So, they, it's, they are named bicyclic compounds, two cycles, two rings. Monocyclic means they contain only one compound. They contain, sorry, they contain only one ring, only one benzene ring. Okay. So, replaced, the carbon is replaced only at some positions. So, it is oxygen. So, there must be carbon number 1, n and n. Okay. So, monocyclic, bicyclic compound means two cycles, two rings. Monocyclic means single ring. Right. And second main difference, contain means purines contain four nitrogen atoms. These pyrimidines contain two nitrogen atoms, four, let us name the positions, at what positions? Four nitrogen atoms at the positions, first position, second position, seventh position and ninth position. First, third, six, seven, eight, nine. So, at the first position, C replaced by N. Third position, C replaced by N. Seventh position, C replaced by N. Ninth position, C replaced by N. Okay. Here, what happens is, so let us name this as first one. If it is the first, second, third, better I'll write again properly so that we will leave the confusion or we will avoid the confusion. So this is the normal benzene ring. So first position, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. So all C, 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 C. In the first position also replaced by N. Third position also replaced by N. Okay. So here we will write it first and third. First and third. Simply purines contain four nitrogen atoms at respect to positions of 1, 3, 7 and 9. Pyrimidines contain two nitrogen atoms at the respective positions of 1 and 3rd. First position and 3rd position. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay. This is the brief difference of pyrimidines as well as pyrimidines with respect to structure. Okay. One more thing. They make one prime nine glycosidic bond. Here they will form one prime one glycosidic bond. So, 1 prime 9, 1 prime 1. What is glycosidic here? Here, when pentose sugar and nitrogen base combine together, the bond is named as a glycosidic bond. For example, at this position, at this position, one of the nitrogen base is attached nitrogen base is attached okay so this bond is named as a 
glycosidic bond okay here purines make one prime nine glycosidic bond here one prime means one prime means the first carbon of the sugar and ninth nitrogen of the nitrogen base will make a glycosidic bond okay first carbon first second third we named here first carbon of the pentose sugar and ninth position ninth nitrogen of the this purine will help in the formation of a glycosidic bond hence the bond is named as a 1 prime 9 glycosidic bond but with respect to pyrimidines they form 1 prime 1 glycosidic bond means first carbon of the sugar and first nitrogen of the nitrogen pyrimidine will form the glycosidic bond hence it is named as a 1 prime 1 1 prime 9 glycosidic bond in case of purine 1 prime 1 glycosidic bond of the pyrimidine so remember this is quite important here 1 prime 9 and 1 prime 1 okay that's how the bond is formed okay next another point uh, the purines have a high melting point the purines have a high melting point they have a low melting point actually this point is not necessary leave it so they have a low melting point coming to the examples here they are very much important examples here so we have adenine we have a guanine and we have a sorry only two are there when it comes to pyrimidine we have adenine sorry we have a cytosine thymine and uracil so why only two here why we have three there the question is there are uh, two types of purines but there are three types of pyrimidines what is that why it is extra okay now the question arises why it is extra why it is whether this one is odd or this one is odd the question arises here okay earlier we said that we said that the there are two types of nucleic acids two types of nucleic acids okay so the first nucleic acid is dna second nucleic acid is rna okay so dna has different pyrimidine rna has a different pyrimidine rna has a different pyrimidine okay so but i'll do one thing uh, adenine i'll write a gonine i will write sorry i'll write g cytosine i will write c thymine i will write t and uh, uracil i will write u okay so uh, i'll make a table to understand that better nitrogen bases nitrogen bases i will make a brief table to understand where actually they are present okay so to make that differentiation we need a table of three columns uh, first column for the writing pyrimidines as well as pyrimidines this is for uh, dna this is one is for the rna okay so this is for dna this is for rna okay so purines first column for purines so there are two purines there are two purines in dna and 
to pyrimidine in a DNA okay so look at the table properly so that we can avoid the confusion throughout the chapter okay I'll write it a pyrimidine pyrimidine DNA has two purines two pyrimidines RNA has two purines two pyrimidines okay purines in DNA they are adenine and guanine pyrimidines thymine and cytosine thymine and cytosine coming to RNA RNA has adenine same guanine same but in the place of thymine it is replaced by uracil and cytosine as usual cytosine as usual ok so this is the major difference one of the very much important question in your CT and NEET examination ok so DNA has two purines adenine and guanine RNA has two purines adenine and guanine similar no problem no difference but in the case of pyrimidine DNA has two pyrimidines thymine and cytosine iron has two pyrimidines uracil and cytosine means thymine of the dna is replaced by uracil in case of rna so remember this uracil and thymine difference uracil of dna sorry uracil of the rna and thymine of the dna these are the nitrogen bases present in dna as well as rna okay so this is how we can see the difference of uh, pyrimidines as well as uh, pyrimidines the difference is made just based on the number of rings they contain two rings as dicyclic compounds bicyclic compounds they contain single ring as a monocyclic compound okay so pause the video and take down them in your notes okay we'll move on to the third component uh, that is a uh, phosph phosphate group or a phosphoric acid the third component as phosphate group as a phosphoric acid H3PO4 so when we say the word phosphoric acid or phosphate group H3PO4 so we'll see the structure then we will understand better third component of the nitrogen base that is a phosphate group phosphate group that is phosphoric acid phosphoric acid as you all know phosphoric acid is nothing but H3PO4 H3PO4 so we will uh, uh, draw the diagram of H3PO4 so we have one phosphate here 3H and 4O so among that one will be P double bond O one is OH other one is also OH third one is also OH right so this is our H3PO4 ok H3 P O4 1 2 3 4 this is a diagram of phosphoric acid so you should remember that this is the one which gives acidic nature for the DNA generally there will be a discussion that DNA is acidic in nature that acidic nature comes from the phosphoric acid phosphate group that makes the DNA as one of the acidic component in the cell in the nucleus right so these are the three components of the dna okay or the rna right so 
then we will see how the these comp three components combine together to form a DNA or the RNA. DNA or RNA. Okay. Generally, there is a statement as uh, nucleic acids are the polynucleotides. Polynucleotides. As you all know that there is a word called polymer. Polymer means if it is a single monomer, if it is many, it is a polymer. One unit monomer, many units polymer, like that. One nucleotide monomer, many nucleotides polynucleotide, polymer. Okay, if it is single, it is called a mononucleotide or simply nucleotide. But when it is many, it is called polynucleotide, a chain of many nucleotides, chain of many nucleotides. So here, one nucleotide is a monomer. As we say, glucose, monosaccharide is the monomer, polysaccharide is the polymer. Amino acid is the monomer, protein is the polymer, polypeptide. Similarly here, nucleotide is the monomer and the DNA or polynucleotide is a polymer. Okay, now our duty is to understand how this nucleotide is formed, how this nucleotide is formed, how one monomer is formed. Okay, for that we should combine all these three. So firstly, when pentose sugar pentose sugar combines with a nitrogen base combines with a nitrogen base then it is known as it is known as nucleoside remember this yes nucleoside it is nucleotide here it is a nucleotide when Pentose sugar combines with the nitrogen base, it is called a, the nucleoside. And here there is a bond formation between those two. The bond is known as a glycosidic bond. Glycosidic bond. So this bond will lead to the combining of pentose sugar as well as nitrogen base to form a nucleoside. And to this nucleoside, to this nucleoside, when the phosphate binds, when the phosphate binds, phosphate group binds, it is known as, it is known as a nucleoside. It is not, sorry, it is a nucleotide. Look at this a T. It is yes. Okay. So nucleoside when pentose sugar binds to nitrogen base, nucleotide when phosphate binds to nucleoside. Okay. So nothing but this is the H3PO4. So what is the bond here? Here the bond is here the bond is a, a phosphodiester or simply the ester bond. Ester bond will lead to the formation of a nucleotide so like that many nucleotides are arranged one other the other one after the other to form a polynucleotide chain nothing but dna or the rna okay so this is theoretical explanation okay we should also understand about the uh, structural nature of this nucleotide formation Okay, how this combines to this to form nucleoside, how this combines to this to form a nucleotide, right? Before that, we will try to write the nucleosides of the DNA and nucleotides of a DNA. Also, nucleosides of RNA, nucleosides types of a RNA, okay? I think it's better we will write in today's class itself so that it will be easy for us to go for the structure in the next class.
okay so remember we have a four nitrogen bases as uh, adenine guanine cytosine thymine uracil okay so thymine in case of dna uracil in case of rna okay uh, to write that uh, we'll see first uh, pentose sugar pentose sugar plus uh, nitrogen base will form a nucleoside nucleoside so pentose sugar in case of dna is deoxyribose pentose sugar in case of dna is deoxyribose plus nitrogen base we have adenine we have adenine and that will form that will form deoxyadenosine the ribose sugar becomes adenosine that is known as deoxyadenosine means the deoxyribose plus nitrogen base will form a deoxyadenosine it is common similarly deoxyribose plus guanine will form deoxyguanosine similarly deoxyribose plus thymine will form deoxy thymidine lastly uh, cytosine deoxyribose plus cytosine will form deoxy cytidine deoxy cytidine okay so here these are the nucleosides of dna nucleosides of a dna they are also called deoxyribotides deoxyribotides sorry deoxyribosides deoxyribosides what about the nucleotide means for this nucleoside there is addition of phosphate group addition of a phosphate group so when phosphate group binds to this h3po4 one phosphate is bound one phosphate is bound this becomes deoxyadenosine monophosphate deoxyguanosine monophosphate deoxythymidine monophosphate deoxycytidine monophosphate okay so it is a uh, deoxyadenosine monophosphate adenosine monophosphate deoxyguanosine monophosphate deoxycytidine mono sorry thymidine monophosphate deoxycytidine monophosphate okay when it comes to rna instead of ribose deoxyribose it is just ribose plus adenine adenosine uh, better i will uh, wind up the video for now in the next class before uh, entering into the structure will i'll write completely on the board so that we will get a complete idea of a uh, nucleoside as well as a nucleotide okay so uh, for this video it is uh, enough for now uh, if you have any more doubts regarding this better write a comment or add your question in the comment box right and uh, if you are new to our channel if you like our video please press on that red colored subscribe button so that you will get a notification whenever i post a new video of course i'll post the video in every day okay one class per day so better subscribe to our channel and if you like the video if you like the teaching if you found this video useful for you and your uh, student or friends share the video among your friends till that keep learning we'll see you in the next video thank you